In January 2014, the sheriff of a small town in Oregon discovered something on a farm that shocked all the residents. The discovery was so eerie that it could have been the basis for the most sophisticated horror films. Susan Monica led an ordinary lifestyle that many might even consider successful. She had several close friends and a good job as an engineer. Susie also lived in one of the most impressive cities, San Francisco, California. However, despite all this, Monica was not satisfied. The fact was that moving to a big city was more of a necessity than a dream for Susie, given the developing circumstances. Ultimately, the move allowed her to work and earn good money. In reality, Susan preferred peace and tranquility. She loved being alone. But living in such a big city was not easy. Every evening when she came home from work, she sat in her favorite chair and dreamed. She dreamed of moving away, settling somewhere in a village far from the hustle and bustle, farming, growing vegetables, and raising animals, ensuring a decent life for herself. One day in 1991, when Susan was already 43 years old, her dream came true. She managed to earn and save money, enabling her to buy a farm with eight acres of land. The farm was located in the forest in Weimar, Oregon. In reality, it was a small house without a barn for animals, without running water, and not even with electricity, a hut surrounded by wilderness without even neighbors. But for Susie, who was tired of city life, this purchase was perfect. Nature was far from people. Moreover, the woman was of strong build and a professional engineer with experience. She knew how to build a home effectively, cost-efficiently, and comfortably. Susan was not afraid of physical work. Within a few months, the neglected plot of land in the forest turned into a neatly built small farm with many stalls for animals. The woman also built a cozy house where she lived. Susie began raising pigs, adding new breeds to the herd every month. However, after establishing a household, she realized it was very difficult for her to manage it alone. She had to get up early every morning, prepare food for the animals, and clean the stalls. The work was hard. Besides, she had several other projects and simply not enough hands for everything. Susan Monica realized that no matter how much she wanted to spend time alone, she needed to find helpers whom she could pay for fulfilling some tasks. She printed flyers announcing that she was ready to hire someone to take care of the animals. Soon, people started coming to her company. Most of them were not very well off, for example, people who had difficulty finding a permanent job due to a series of problems, issues with documents, a criminal record, or a nomadic lifestyle. Few people were willing to hire such individuals for official jobs, but for Susie, it didn't matter. The only thing that concerned her was that her pigs were fed, the stalls were cleaned, and the workers did not bother her with their attention. Over the next 20 years, Susan Monica would employ several hundred workers. Workers came and went, most not staying long. Some saw the farm work as a part-time job for one or two weeks. Others managed to work for the woman for several months, but they were always people constantly searching for a better life. After the hired workers left her farm, she knew nothing about their further fate. Every time Susan found herself without assistance, she would post ads throughout the town again to find laborers. Almost everyone in the small town knew Monica as a woman fixated on her farm and always selling fresh meat. On January 1, 2014, Susan, who was 66 years old at the time, was working in front of her hut, cleaning up the chaos. When she heard noises, she looked up and saw a car approaching her house. Susan was surprised. She lived in the forest and still had no neighbors. Guests came very rarely, usually by appointment, but this time she was expecting no one. The car stopped next to her. Three young people got out of the car, two men and a woman. The strangers were the first to start a conversation. It turned out that the three were looking for their father, Robert Haney, who had previously told them he was working on Susan's farm. Earlier, Robert used to visit his children at least every few months. Now, they hadn't heard from their father for six months. Since Robert had no permanent residence and no personal phone, the youngsters had no way to contact their father. So they decided to personally search for Haney to make sure everything was fine with their father. Susan Monica was shown a photo of a man and asked if she knew Robert. He might still be working for her or had quit, but Susan might know where he could be. This visit was a complete surprise for her. 
She had never had guests before, and the woman treated the visitors attentively, even though she didn't like communicating with strangers. Susan said that last spring, she indeed hired a man named Robert. Haney also had a dog he cherished. The man performed his duties diligently, was efficient, and not intrusive. But five months later, in August, Robert changed drastically. He started abusing alcohol, avoided work, and was constantly confused. Susan was annoyed by the presence of a drinking man on her property. She told him to leave her farm as Monica no longer wanted to work with him. The next day, Robert Haney approached the owner, handed her an envelope with money, said he had to leave for a while, and asked Susan to take care of his dog in his absence. After that, the man left, and Monica never heard from Robert again. It turned out that Haney's belongings were still stored in a trailer on the farm. Clothes, personal notebooks. But one thing especially caught the youngster's attention. Their father's tool belt. Robert worked part-time with repairs all his life, and it was very strange that he disappeared for four months without taking his tools with him. The youngsters thanked Susan and asked her to immediately inform them by phone if she had any information about their father. After leaving the farm, Robert's children went straight to the Jackson County Sheriff's Office to file a missing person report. The police took their statement, but immediately said it was difficult to find a person without permanent registration and without a personal mobile phone. However, since crimes were common in the area, the officers were interested in Robert Haney's personality. Maybe the man who led an unstable lifestyle did something illegal and was now hiding from everyone. The young people were asked to recall every detail that could help the investigators find the man. At some point, Robert's son remembered that his father had a social card on which money was deposited monthly and from which he received state benefits. The card could be used to buy things, which was at least something. It took a few days to track the transactions. It turned out the card was used in a store near Susan's farm just a month ago. When the investigators checked the surveillance cameras in the grocery store, it became clear that Robert did not shop there. But on that day, Susan Monica shopped at the supermarket, using Haney's social card, which was very suspicious. When they returned to the police station, the officers immediately obtained a search warrant for the farm where the woman lived. A few days later, on January 10th, the sheriff and his deputies arrived at Susan Monica's property. The woman met the police at the door and was hospitable. The officers reported that they had come in connection with the case of the missing Robert Haney to search her property. The sheriff asked Susan to show him around the house, while the rest of the police stayed in the yard and began inspecting the area outside the house. The sheriff and Susan sat in the kitchen and started talking. The woman repeated the same story she had told Robert's children. But when the officer pointed out that Susan had recently used Haney's social security card, the woman said, Oh yes, I forgot to mention, Robert gave me his card along with the envelope of money so I could buy food for his dog since the dog was still with me and I had to feed and take care of it. Susan also added that she couldn't use Robert's card if she had stolen it because she needed a pin code and the man had given her the password himself. The sheriff was skeptical and continued asking questions to confuse her. But Susan Monica spoke confidently and remained steadfast in her answers. In the end, the sheriff concluded that the farm owner was likely telling the truth. The case seemed to be at a dead end, and there was nothing to complain about. The officer stood up, thanked Susan for the conversation, and was about to leave. At that moment, his assistant ran into the house, leaned over to the sheriff, and whispered something in his ear. The officer turned pale at the information he received. He looked at Susan in horror and said, You need to come with us to the police station. While she was in the interrogation room, Susan looked agitated. She didn't understand what was going on and why she was detained. The investigators then turned on the surveillance cameras and asked her a question. Has there ever been a case where a person died on the premises of your farm? Susan stared at the investigator for about a minute, seemingly not knowing what to say. But after a pause, the woman began her story. Everything Susan Monica had previously said about the missing Robert Haney was true, except for one small detail she had overlooked. After Robert left her farm six months ago, he recently returned, which was a month ago. One early morning, 
Susan woke up to feed her animals. When she entered the pigsty, she saw a strange sight. Normally, the pigs would lie lazily waiting for food, but not this time. That morning, the animals were gathered in a part of the pen, seemingly surrounding something and trying to examine it with interest. When Susan realized something odd was happening, she began to push the pigs away, and as she reached the center, she saw Robert. The man was lying on his back with his intestines torn out. But the most shocking part was that Robert was still conscious, groaning, and moving his hand. Susan tried to pull Robert out, but her animals behaved aggressively, continuing to attack the victim and tear pieces off him. The woman realized it was impossible to save Haney and decided to ease the unfortunate man's suffering. Susan returned to the house, grabbed her gun, went back to the pigsty, and shot Robert, thus performing an act of mercy by ending Haney's suffering. She then collected Robert's remains in bags and threw them into a trash heap in her barn. It's evident that the man's remains were still there because during the search, a police officer entered Susan's house and whispered to the sheriff, Sir, we found a human leg. It was Robert's leg, and it was found not in a trash heap, but in the middle of the yard, out in the open. Most likely, a wild animal sneaked into the barn and dragged the bag with the man's remains out. When asked why she didn't call the emergency services when she found Robert, Susan replied that she was afraid her pigs would be punished after the incident. The animals could simply be put down, and in that case, Susan would lose her main source of income. Even if the pigs weren't euthanized, the news of the incident would quickly spread throughout the village, and people in the area would simply refuse to buy meat from her. Susan Monica was subjected to a lie detector test. During the test, the woman constantly fidgeted and coughed, trying to ensure that the readings she provided were inaccurate. The procedure had to be stopped. Susan was warned that her entire farm would be searched if she didn't stop resisting the investigation. If the investigators managed to find something she hadn't already told them, the woman would be in serious trouble. At that moment, Susan Monica stopped fidgeting. She looked at the police officers, and after a long pause, she asked for a piece of paper and a pen, after which she began diligently drawing something on the paper. After a while, it became clear that Susan was drafting a plan of her farm. Then she placed a large cross in the middle and said, If you go to this place, you'll find Steve here. Everyone in the room was surprised. It was about Robert. Who was Steve? And what did he have to do with it? It turned out that Steve had worked on her farm in 2012 before Susan hired Robert. Initially, he was also very efficient, but then the woman caught the employee stealing. Steve wanted to steal the owner's gun. At that moment, there was a struggle between Steve and Susan, during which the gun accidentally went off in the man's hands. Steve fell wounded in the middle of the pigsty. Suddenly, the pigs attacked the unfortunate man and began to tear him to pieces. The woman didn't call the police either, fearing her pigs would be harmed and she would lose her income. The villagers would definitely refuse to buy fresh meat from her. In fact, there was no evidence contradicting her stories, no matter how unbelievable the farm owner's tales about what happened to Robert and Steve were. When Susan stood trial, her fate was entirely in the hands of the jury. It was only a matter of whether the people in the courtroom would believe her story. And they did not. On April 21, 2015, a year after Robert Haney was reported missing, Susan was convicted of murder and abuse of the victim's body in two cases. The woman was sentenced to 50 years in prison. Later, it turned out that about 17 more people were missing in the area. These were men who did not lead a very prosperous lifestyle and could have worked on Susan Monica's farm at different times. However, no evidence or other remains were found during the search of the woman's farm. So the disappearance of these people remains a mystery to everyone.